Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a post-apocalyptic film. Carriers, spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins when a certain family is shown enjoying themselves at the beach. At first glance, it's shown that this family is living a perfect life without any present tragedies. Many years later, on a road trip in the middle of the desert, a group of young people takes their car to go to a certain place. It reveals that the children from the beginning are Danny and Brian. They plan to go to their childhood beach, along with Brian's girlfriend and Danny's friend, Kate, to reminisce about some nostalgic memories. While driving, the group asks each other questions to lighten the mood. While on the road, the group notices that a certain car is stuck out of nowhere. The stranger says that he and his daughter ran out of gas and need help as soon as possible. Brian feels threatened when the man starts approaching them slowly. Moreover, Kate confirms the threat when she sees the stranger's daughter wearing a face mask with blood on it, implying that she is sick. This scene also reveals that the world is currently facing a deadly pandemic that kills most of the population. Terror by terror, the stranger picks up a tool and uses it as a weapon to smash the car's window. As a reaction, Brian drives the car and tries his best to avoid the stranger's car in the middle of the road. Luckily, the group can escape the crazy man and proceed to their destination. With the pandemic, Danny narrates his brother's rule for them to survive. First, avoid the infected at all costs. Second, disinfect anything they have touched in the last 24 hours. And lastly, the sick are already dead. They cannot be saved. Danny also says that if they do not stick to the rule, they will be the ones to die. Unfortunately, the group's car starts dysfunctioning. Brian says they have no chance of fixing the car and should already give up. Danny advises that they should go back to use the stranger's car and give them gas. However, Kate does not like the idea and thinks that Danny is crazy for even thinking about it. But leaving with no choice, they are forced to go back to ask the stranger for help, even with certain risks. The stranger explains his situation and plans to take his daughter to the treatment center for her to be cured. He also says that if the group is on board with his plan, he will allow them to use his car. Danny then proposes an idea to create a barrier inside the car to prevent the virus from spreading. Fortunately, they can proceed after they sanitize the vehicle thoroughly. Suddenly, Brian loses control of the car and the group goes outside. Interestingly, they see an abandoned car parked just beside the road. They open the door to start the engine to check if they can use it. Danny then sees a seemingly dead person, a virus victim, in the driver's seat. As Danny is about to start the car, he's startled when the person starts moving and attempts to grab him. Because of it, they just decide to take the gas and leave the area as soon as possible. It's now nighttime. They camp before going to sleep. Their peace is taken away when they suddenly hear multiple gunshots. Panicking, they put the fire out to hide from the unknown people. Moreover, the group witnesses a certain man get killed due to the gunshots. By daytime, they arrive at the treatment center, where a vaccine for the disease is supposedly developed. The group then goes to the building to look for people. Unfortunately, the group sees nothing but abandoned medical stuff. However, Kate insists that they should survey the building more. After hearing a sound, Kate goes to follow it. Interestingly, they see a massive laboratory in which scientists are present. Hoping for his last straw, the father stranger talks to one of the doctors to seek help. The doctor then orders the group to bring the little girl inside to check on her situation. However, the doctor makes it clear that the vaccine they developed has failed. He also shows the other kids infected by the virus and intends to mercifully kill them to end their suffering. Angry, the father takes Brian's gun and threatens the doctor not to do any harm to the kids. However, the doctor is emotionless and explains that they have no choice but to do it. Slowly accepting their fate, the father drops the gun and lets the doctor kill the remaining children. Inside the car, the little girl is having a hard time breathing. To help, the girlfriend breaks the barrier and goes near the little girl. Suddenly, the little girl coughs blood and it contacts the girlfriend's skin, possibly infecting her with the virus. Panicking, she returns the barrier and keeps what happened a secret from the group. Accepting his daughter's fate, the father carries his daughter and takes her outside the car. Moreover, with a heavy heart, Brian and the group abandon the stranger and his daughter and leave the area without them. In the next scene, the group goes to an abandoned building to scavenge for food and materials. Not long after, Brian and his girlfriend are alone in the same room. Brian explains that what he did earlier with the stranger and the little girl was only for their security. Moreover, Brian almost got infected when he almost fell into the pool with a dead man floating in it. To cope with their tragic situation, the group decides to play golf for a little fun. In the next scene, a certain person calls one of the phones in the hotel they are staying in. This reveals that they are not alone in the hotel and many people are coming back to their area. Moreover, Kate and Danny hear people in the building and they hide to escape. While hiding, an armed person goes inside the room to look for them. 
Even with their best attempt to escape, they are cornered by armed people. On the other side of the story, Brian notices the vehicle parked outside the hotel. He also sees one of the armed people patrolling the entrance to the hotel. As the armed person approaches, Brian takes a weapon and uses it to knock down the armed person. When he successfully corners the guy, he asks him who he is and what they are doing in the hotel. The person confides that they are just survivors scavenging for supplies. Not long after, the person's comrades and the rest of the group come out of the hotel and order Brian to let go of their colleague. Angry, one of the armed men beats the shit out of Brian. They accuse the group of having killed the person floating in the swimming pool earlier. Angry, the survivor's leaders order the rest of the group to leave the area, except for the women. To check if the women are clean, they order them to strip their clothes for better observation. They realize that Brian's girlfriend is infected with the virus. As a reaction, the rest of the armed survivors panic and order everyone to go away. In the next scene, they proceed to their car to look for the nearest gas station. Meanwhile, Kate and Danny respect the people who have died from the virus. Kate says they will end up dead if they continue letting Brian's girlfriend accompany them on the trip. Kate advises Danny to talk to his brother about leaving his girlfriend behind for their security. In the next scene, Danny confronts Brian about his infected girlfriend. Visibly angry, Danny thinks it is not the right time to talk about it, so he leaves the room and goes to the car instead. Without saying anything, the rest of the group proceeds to go the road, pretending not to be bothered by the lingering virus. Still with a heavy heart, Brian conforms to his own rule and orders his shitty girlfriend to exit their group. The girlfriend then begs the group to let her stay, but Brian does not like the idea and forces his girlfriend out of the vehicle. To compensate, Brian takes some water and food supplies for his girlfriend before leaving her behind. The girlfriend feels devastated as she witnesses her friends abandoning her in the middle of the desert. Before leaving, Brian blames his girlfriend for staying in touch with the little girl. The group then drives away as the girlfriend cries heavily, fearing for her shitty life. Unlucky again, the group realizes that they are out of gas on the way. Fortunately, they stumble into a car in the middle of the road and plan to approach them and ask for some spare gas. However, instead of asking politely, Brian blocks the pathway, so that the strangers would have no choice but to talk to them. Danny leaves the car and asks the stranger if they have some spare gas to give. Unfortunately, the women say they do not have anything to give them. However, Danny tries to appeal to the women's emotions by pretending that he's also a fellow Christian. He also says his wife is pregnant, trying to fool the women. Still with a heavy heart, the women drive away from the scene. So sick of everything, Brian goes out of the car and takes his gun to shoot the women. Danny tries to stop his brother's rampage, but he's already too late. Brian orders the women to get out of the car, but they fight back, leaving Brian with an injured leg. Brian outshoots the women as he successfully kills both of them, with no hesitation and hormone mercy. Danny could not believe what his brother had done to the cash poor, but hormone rich women. Danny now could not stand his brother's violent behavior. However, Brian explains that someone had to do it for them to survive. While fighting, Brian argues that Danny has done nothing to contribute to their team, and he is the only one doing the work. Speechless, Danny does not fight back and instead listens to his brother's dismay. After a short ride, Danny wakes up to witness Brian becoming weak because of his injury. The three of them then stop at a nearby house for a rest. Danny leaves the car, and they climb the house roof to get inside. As Danny successfully enters the window, he is greeted by a dead elderly woman, seemingly dead because of the virus. Moreover, Danny takes the elderly woman's shotgun in case they will need it in the future. Not long after, Danny sees a person inside a room. Danny assures them that they are not infected and only looking for medical supplies for them to use. Danny then opens the door to the room and he is suddenly sick inside as he witnesses a dog eating the remains of its dead owner. Luckily, Danny sees medical supplies in the room, but he needs to be careful so that the dog will not hurt him. However, he is unlucky when the dog smells his shit and jumps to attack him. To defend himself, he takes the shotgun and uses it to kill the lonely dog. Danny goes out of the car with medical supplies. He then rushes to his brother to treat the wound on his leg. However, as Danny checks on his brother's wound, he notices that Brian is already infected with the deadly virus. Danny then informs Kate that his brother is infected. In the next scene, they continue to take the road, with Brian sitting at the back of the car. After a long day, they camp outside to rest for a little bit. Sentimental, Brian starts talking about the memories of him with his girlfriend. As Brian slowly falls asleep, Danny takes advantage of the situation to leave his brother behind. Before doing so, he tries taking Brian's gun, but he's unsuccessful as his brother suddenly wakes up and talks more about the tragedies of his life. When Brian loses consciousness again, Danny confiscates the gun and takes the key away from his brother. Danny then leaves the area without hesitation. 
However, Brian wakes up and refuses to be left behind. Panicking, Danny tries to start the car, but realizes he got the wrong key. Brian rises and shows them the real keys. Feeling threatened by Brian's behavior, Kate gives Danny the gun in case he and his brother get into a fight. Danny then leaves the car and politely asks his brother to return the keys to them. Brian says he will give the keys if they allow him to come to the beach. Brian then dares his brother that if he wants the keys, he must shoot him in the head. Danny then lifts his gun, getting ready to shoot if his brother ever comes closer. Brian says that he's dying and does not care about the rules, and he only wants to see the ocean again. Leaving with no choice, Danny pulls the trigger to kill his poor brother so he and Kate can survive. After paying respect to the dead, Danny and Kate go to the beach. However, Danny realizes that it would never be the same without his brother's presence on the beach. The pandemic has taken not only Danny's brother away from him, but also the life and memories of the place that used to be so meaningful for him. Danny will now be forever alone, with heavy, soulless memories haunting him every single day. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.